I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and today I'm going to talk about a Foundry VTT module that I forgot in my last video. Let's roll it. In my demonstration the other week of my favorite Foundry Virtual Top modules, I forgot one that is probably a GM's best friend, and that is Token Mold. When Token Mold is installed in your Actors directory, it puts a little menu up on top of the list over here, and you can set up some different settings for it. Some of them are system specific, so there are certain things that you can only do in Pathfinder, I believe, 2E and in D&D 5E, uh, but a lot of the things will work cross-platform. In fact, I'm using Token Mold quite readily in my sandbox install that I run Basic Fantasy RPG through. And there are different things that you can do. So one of the key things that I like is to add a counting number to the name as a suffix every time I drop a token onto the map. That way, if the characters happen to get into combat, I don't have to figure out which orc or which goblin or which whatever is their turn in the combat order. I can just look at the number and know, okay, that's three. One of the things that's bad about that is that sometimes players will count the numbers and figure out how many creatures there actually are that they're dealing with. So if you have a couple people that are hidden off in a corner somewhere, they're like, oh, wait, that's four. And there's we've only seen three and four. And uh, it's because the names show up in the combat tracker. So you can do something sneaky and say, well, we're going to add four every time we add another token in. And that way, no one really can figure out what the number is unless they're paying really close attention. You can also decide that you want to add a random adjective from the dictionary. So if you don't want to do the index, you can add a common word like big or large, or there's some really weird ones that go in there as well. And those actually add in some flavor if you're okay with the randomness of the names. You can also say that you're going to change a stat overlay, which I don't tend to use, but say you want to put in the AC and see what that is, you can drop it in. One of the really cool things is when you drop in your tokens, if you have it set to auto roll hit points, it will. So every token that you throw in doesn't have the average number of hit points that shows up in, say, the monster manual. And I'll show you what this looks like. I'm going to drag a dire wolf onto the map. It will roll the hit points. And you can see that it stuck seven as an appendix to its name and put imposing as its adjective on the top. Let's add a giant crocodile then to go with it. Those things are nasty. Lazy giant crocodile. Kind of cool. So if we add these into combat then, and go over to our combat tracker, there's imposing direwolf number seven and lazy giant crocodile number three. You can see their hit points are different. They're not necessarily the base that shows up in the monster manual. So that gives a little bit of a different flavor to each of these different creatures that your party might encounter. Token mold saves an immense amount of time when you're trying to just drop characters in for an encounter where combat is going to be a likely outcome. You don't have to roll the dice manually. You don't have to say this is this hobgoblin, that's that hobgoblin. It all gets taken care of for you. This is probably my best friend as a GM using Foundry Virtual Tabletop to run my games.